Hello everyone, today is Friday, February 11th, 2022. My name is Evan, welcome back to our weekly stock market analysis video series. If it's your first time here, welcome, thanks for joining us. Here's how these videos work. We break up our analysis into two parts. In part one, we look at everything that went on this week in markets. We go beyond price action and look at things like sector performance and correlations and volatility, credit markets, all the good stuff, pick apart things that look different, interesting, or notable. And then in part two, we jump into those charts. We get a sense of the intermediate longer term trends and how to just best position ourselves looking ahead. So hopefully that sounds good to you. Let's jump into some of the headlines from this very busy week. So I think the main takeaway is by the end of the week, we saw pretty much bearish equity reversals all around. Pick your index, pick your stock, pick your sector. Most of the action this week was an initial move to the upside, followed by a reversal and close near the lows of the week. There were obviously some exceptions, but generally speaking, uh, we ended on a very negative tone. We did have, you know, CPI prints earlier this week. Seven and a half percent was the top headline year over year number. And we continue to see the high yield markets accelerate lower. So we're going to talk all about everything here um, as we sort of get through this video. So um, first off, let's just look at performance. And if we look here at the right hand side, you can see this is the one week change. And we basically had three of the four US indices in the red here. We had a very clear standout, which is the Russell 2000. So what you have to understand about the Russell 2000, this houses sort of the small cap universe of stocks. There's a lot of energy in there. There's actually a lot of small financials in there as well. Those were two sectors that did very well. Mostly it was energy that did extremely well this week. And you're seeing that outperformance really sort of um, stick out very clearly uh, in a sea of red here. We had the large cap tech down 3%, NASDAQ 100 down the biggest. You can also see on the one month number now, again, NASDAQ 100, the weakest continues to be the case. That's not new. Uh, this is something we've been charting and talking about for a while now. So that continues to be the case. And then everything else sort of falls in line. Again, international stocks here are still doing pretty well on a relative basis uh, against the United States. If we take a look at market internals, there's no real saving grace here. We still had a very negative week. So if we look at the number of stocks, 52 week highs minus lows on the NYSE, we had almost a thousand this week to the downside. So that trend lower is still very much continuing. We did see on average, you know, the AD line did hang, hang in there a little bit better. Again, thanks to the Russell 2000 uh, did close negative on the week in aggregate. Uh, and we get about 45% of stocks above a 20 SMA in the S&P 500, which seems actually pretty high to me still. But um Maybe that means there's still more room to the downside. Here is the NYSE 52 week highs minus lows summed up over the past 30 days. Uh, picture says a thousand words. I think this is all you really need to see to sort of encompass uh, the action here, the sentiment, uh, what's going on underneath the hood. I know there was lots of, um, you know, uh, joyous relief early in the week, you know, with markets rallying and, you know, the bottom is potentially in and we're getting continuation patterns. Well, this is what's going on underneath the hood. And this, along with a few other pieces of evidence still suggests that we are in very rocky territory. So tread carefully, uh, particularly on the long side. If we take a look at sector performance, again, you get the standouts with energy here, 2% on the week. Obviously, there's a lot of uh, geopolitical tensions there and uh, developments, which is potentially keeping this, you know, in its um, uh, just elevated state, let's call it. So um, that is very much going to be, I think, uh, potentially headline driven on how we see, uh, you know, energy and, and oil and, and all of this trade. Well, clearly 2% to the upside, materials up 1%, financials flat, and everything else down here in the red, tech was the worst, 3% down, real estate 2.76%, comm services 2.63%. Take a look at the one month numbers as well. Uh, nearly every sector now, except for energy in the red uh, over the past 30 trading sessions. 
if we take a look at volatility so we got the vix back up to the let's see the high 20s so going out around 2744 take a look at this blue line so this is the term structure for this week we're just simplified term structure here we we use you know uh different proxies to sort of capture the term structure but basically what you're seeing is a much more sideways a flat line basically that goes across time that's not a good sign you don't necessarily want to see uh uh, front month VIX priced as it you know same going for three and six in, in a year out uh, that definitely tells you the market is concerned in the short term that it's bidding up uh, protection and um, things are certainly uh, dicey here in the short term so we got that big VIX spike up to near 30 uh, definitely nothing good happens up there for volatility for the market if we go to interest rates so we did see interest rates continue their march higher so of course the CPI and the narrative really drives driving here that the Fed is destined to continue to raise rates. Um, this is, you know, certainly keeping uh, interest rates just, you know, rallying in front of that. But by the end of the week, we did get a notable reversal. We're going to talk more about that when we look at some charts here. So we are well off of the highs here on how we finished for yields, but still you can see they were up across the board. And then take a look here at high yield bonds, investment grade bonds even. These continue negative. So if you uh, have been watching the videos week after week, uh, this has just been a negative print here every single week, week over week. Uh, even, you know, again, last week's when we when we got the, the bounce in the equity markets, high yield continued to roll over right and that was sort of one of the themes we were talking about was okay we've, we're getting this bounce here in, in 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 equities but it's a glass half empty sort of bounce is is kind of the perception the view the analogy we were using uh when we were going through uh these charts in the past couple of weeks if we take a look at uh, commodities here you can see the dollar was up uh so the dollar is up back up towards the well back into the middle of the range here not quite back up towards the highs but still recovery for uh the dollar which again is not necessarily the greatest thing in the world either for for stocks uh gold was up pretty sharply finally starting to act like a hedge uh silver was up bitcoin was flat and uh agriculture crude oil continue to march higher natural gas though certainly some of the wind momentum coming out of that uh, that trade so if we take a look here at the report card um, almost X is across the board this one just marginally uh, by the rules that we have programmed in here uh, is passing as a check mark but it was a solid D uh, really more like an F but uh, we'll give it a D I guess just um, I don't know, is it D a passing grade? I, I guess it is. Um, so I guess the market passed uh, this week, but things were certainly certainly pretty ugly out there. Now, if we finalize here, this is a look snapshot of our trading systems. These are our quant uh, systems that we run here. So our top system is Merlin, and this one's a longer term system, looks out about six weeks or so. Now, don't let this percentage fool you, because actually what uh, our trading system did here this week was start allocating into treasuries. So uh, even though this looks like it's 58%, that's not 58% in stock. Uh, this is probably 20% um, in stock, maybe 25%. I, I'd have to look at the exact numbers. Um, but, m but most of the exposure that it picked up this week to bring it all the way back up to almost 60 was, was fixed income. So that is not you know, that is not bullish, that is not equities, that is not risk on, um, but it is showing like this. I need to get a different view here for that. So uh, basically, you know, still de-risked and um, is, is, is just trying to put some cash to work and, you know, not earn zero interest type of thing. Uh, Lamerick here, short-term trading system, very tactical, 0%. So it's actually got two positions on. It's got one long and one short. So basically it's telling you that um, it doesn't really want to deal with this market right now, or it's just, it's, it's looking for opportunity on both, but it's still holding, you know, predominantly cash right now. So it's not seeing much of an edge right here, uh, but it does have a long and a short on, and it's, basically you know kind of perfectly hedged so that is uh the current snapshot on r2 trading systems if you want to get access you want to learn more about them you want to receive uh nightly trade reports on what they're up to click that link in the top right hand column that'll take you to a one dollar trial page and you can test drive them for two weeks so with that we'll be back here in just a second with some charts Okay, we are back. Part two here. We've got Warden TC2000 open. We're looking at our equity market grid. So we have our custom smart trend filter. Those are the multicolored dots you see on these charts that measures price and volume across time. And it helps us 
uh, determine path of least resistance and general trend guidance in a very objective price and volume combination. Uh, if you're a TC2000 user, you can download that indicator. It's on our website. Check it out. Uh, Traderist.com forward slash door should get you there. So we're looking at a weekly time frame, and first thing we'll notice in the top left here, S&P 500 still hanging on to the yellowed print here. So we are not producing a sell signal yet for the S&P 500. This is, you know, stubborn, right? And this is how this indicator is developed. It, it tries to smooth out noise and wants real sort of convincing signals uh, before it produces anything. And uh, S&P 500, well below our smart trend filter, but not turning red just yet. So it's hanging out uh, and trying to, you know, show a little bit of relative strength. It's going to have to do some work next week. Buyers are going to have to show back up pretty quickly uh, if this is going to get saved. If we look at the top right, NASDAQ, third week in a row on the sell signal. This was one of, well, it wasn't the first. So the Russell 2000 in the bottom left was the first to turn down. Uh, NASDAQ was the second to turn down, but again, you can see three weeks down in a row um, and uh, certainly still uh, three red dots in a row, that is. Uh, and uh, you can see price, you know, continues to roll over. Russell 2000 uh, was green today. But again, you can still see that sell signal that's uh, on the Russell here. So it still says buyer beware. And in Acquiex International Stocks, you can see we're still mixed there with a yellow print. If we go down to the daily chart. So remember the daily chart now in most of these markets, they, they were coming off of this rebound we had over the past two weeks, basically to start the month of February. And so now we're starting to roll back over that's essentially what we got remember we had those outside reversals this week so again you can see we're, we're not quite turning down just yet um, but we're we're below our daily trend filter also note that even though we did get above our our smart trend filter here i'm looking at the s p 500 in the top left um, notice this this never printed a green buy signal right so again this is trying to reduce the noise here so the fact that the preceding signal was still bearish, we did briefly get above it. It did not print a buy signal, came back down, tried another time, could not print a buy signal, and now it's rolling over. So we'll see if we get a sell signal down here at the bottom end of the range. Same goes for the NASDAQ on the right-hand side. This one obviously did not... Um, push as high, but still, you know, bearish to down. And uh, Russell 2000 was just enough. This was the only index this week that could finally produce a little bit of a buy signal here. So again, a little bit of relative strength for the Russell. Let's keep an eye on it. I still think it's it's centered mostly around energy, um, but we'll, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, stick with the signal here and, and just, um, you know, note the relative outperformance. So let's take a look here at some price action. Let's take a look at our roadmap that we've been kind of looking at here. Remember, we, we've been, you know, kind of using this this one here as the real, real simple roadmap. And it served us very well, right? We didn't have to get too complex and, and pull out all kinds of crazy uh, technical indicators. We really could just use prior supply and demand levels. And this was levels I drew on here weeks ago. Uh, and it was basically this 4550 to 4600 zone and all the way down here around 4300 those were the relevant points to stay above and you can see that the market did close above this band here for two days it was this day back here on wednesday um and then briefly here on wednesday again so um when we look at, you know, just generally the action here, though, it's been contained underneath here. So we effectively failed to take out the prior highs. Uh, this was something we talked about again last Friday. If we we're going to see more constructive action in the S&P 500, we'd have to take out the 4600 zone. The market failed to do that this week. We put out a trade ideas video on Wednesday. The only thing we highlighted was essentially bearish setups and the fact that markets were rallying into supply. So for me, uh, and I think if you've been following the videos here I mean I try not to uh, lead too much with my opinion on these mark uh, on these videos I, I like to display and and present the information and in a very objective way and sort of let you all uh, figure out what's best for you right because everyone that's listening to this is, is got different objectives and time frames um, but obviously recently I've been a little more um, you know vocal about the stance on on the bearish side and and I think 
you know, it's just been very clear that there's been more uh, evidence on the on the sell side. And I still think that's the case here. So when I look at this price action, it still looks pretty ugly to me. We failed at resistance. We took another attempt at it up here around 4,600. We rejected. We're doing it on heavy volume. We're coming back down. It seems like we're going to test 4,300 in the next week or two. And, you know, that's where the market will kind of make up its mind to see if we're going to just go sideways in a range for, you know, maybe the next month, right? The market's just, you know, digests this whole Fed rhetoric and whether or not interest rates are going to really be going up and, you know, the rest of earnings season and all that fun stuff. Or, um, you know, are we just set for another leg down here? And uh, this was something I, um, you know, put out uh, as, as a quick mention on social is, did we just start the second leg lower, right? Where we had our first leg down from uh, the start of the year, and now we're about to start our second leg down and and come probe this perfectly, you know, uh, projected 4,000 test on the S&P 500, which would be approximately a 16% uh, drawdown in the S&P 500. And if we were to, you know, kind of throw on even even just like a monthly chart. This one might be a little too intense. Let's go to a weekly chart. Uh, even a test of around 4,000 brings you back down to the middle of 2021, which um, after, you know, the run that we've had isn't all that crazy, right? 18% drawdown, probably, you know, uh, something that... Uh, even even healthy cyclical you know uh or secular bull markets are, are gonna are gonna face from time to time so that's you know a lot of projection there again i don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves i'm not calling for you know four thousand tests here um but i do have the open roadmap and 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 the scenario in my head that that could get us there so uh one day at a time let's measure 4300 first right now we're trapped between let's call it 46 and 4300 and that's the choppy range we're going to be in uh, obviously markets kind of um rolling over here into the weekend if we take a look at the russell 2000 again you know we basically had this um you know uh, a breakdown of this range here going sideways for a year we got as low as about 190 and uh, then we rallied about 10% to uh, essentially 11% to almost just come back and kiss this breakout zone or breakdown zone, right? It was almost like a perfect retest here. And so if you're bearish on this market, I mean, you're you're setting up here for a potential bear flag rollover back down to 190s with a ton of overhead supply above you. So to me, again, the technicals just are a little bit rough here uh, and buyers are really going to have to step up, do some work if that's going to, you know, sort of convince me otherwise. NASDAQ 100, again, very similar thing. Uh, you know, we've had this big channel that we've been in. We broke down. Uh, we rallied off of the lows, chopped around, put in a lower high, double topped, and now we're starting to roll over again. So all basically the same kind of look here and it looks a little pessimistic to me now if we take a look at some other markets let's go to vix for instance we're back into the upper 20s so again we're finding support at 20 just like all the way back here in our video series every time you know uh, the vix would either fail up here around 20, uh, you know, and, and we used to look at 20 as resistance or so. Um, now we're finding 20 as support, right? So now the fix is is up here north of 25. Uh, it's just not a great spot for it. And uh, again, maybe we don't see a 40 fix, but even a fix that hovers in between 25 and 35 uh, is still going to likely um, cause some concern for equity markets. Now, a couple of other markets that were notable this week. Uh, let's talk about TLT. So so TLT is the long bond here and uh, take a look at the volume that came in on Friday, right? There's these days to take notice as I usually like to call them. And I think we had a day to take notice here on uh, this Friday. We had this big outside reversal. We saw the heaviest volume that we've seen uh, basically, you know, in a year. And it's coming at, uh, you know, after uh, the market has been stretched to the downside here and everyone seems you know, uh, prep for higher interest rates. So for me, TLT, this seems like a pretty nice reversal here. Uh, this was again, like a position Merlin took this week. Uh, didn't take it on Friday, did take it a little bit earlier. So, um, anyhow, uh, you know, we do have a position in this, but TLT, 
maybe uh, could be ready to rally a little bit here and maybe finally start to act as a bit of a hedge against uh, this, uh, what, what could potentially be another leg down in the uh, equity markets. So we'll have to see, could go right down the uh, the, the term here, 10 year uh, bond funds. You can see US treasuries just rallying as well, heavier volume outside reversals. So something to take note of, and then also take a look at gold. So gold here, again, no surprise, I've been uh, bullish on gold. I've been suggesting how I think this is gonna be uh, a good place to be. Uh, finally starting to you know see that now from a price action perspective. Active. Clearly, I was a little bit early in my bullishness, uh, but you can see gold now heavy volume coming in, closing at highs here. Again, it still looks a, a little bit messy, um, but GLD now on a weekly chart starting to firm up and, and you know, this one could really move um, at least relative to equity markets. Right. So, um, you know, something that is uh, perking up. So that uh, let's see, actually oil. Oil closing at new highs. I did put out a tweet this week um, on on XLE, uh, and I you know tried calling for this. Um, yeah, it was pretty much this little double top, uh, this little micro sort of sell signal. So I, I this was on. Let's see this day right here. Um, one more day. Yeah, there it is. So basically, you know, on this session here, I was like, you know, um, this, this looks like, you know, that could be it. Maybe we see a little bit of a reversal here in XLE finally, or this was really oil I was charting. That's why everything looks a little off. Anywho, it was basically this day I was char charting on oil and, and you know, kind of looking at this as potentially being, you know, kind of the breakdown day, uh, but clearly wrong here. And clearly, you know, this is back up towards highs. So, um, again, uh, in an uptrend, you, you have to manage risk. You have to take a lot of small little losses. If you're going to take your shot on a short like this, uh, you got to just quickly cover it and you got to wait uh, until the market kind of, um, you know, gives you that confirmation or, or uh uh, suggest to you that you're right. So for now, XLE back at highs, I would not want to be standing in front of that. We talked about the geopolitical risks uh, involved in this as well. So um, I think that's it. So that was all the markets I wanted to cover. Let's go to, oh, actually, no, there was one other. Let's go to um, HYG, right? High yield. Look at this. Um, that continues to trend lower, even JNK. So, you know, all of this just, just steady, steady, steady downtrend. Um, and, and, and this was in the face of, of, you know, when you had the spy bouncing last week, right? So, so there were other signs there. Um, uh, let's, let's look at some sectors and industries though, to finish off here. So surprisingly, there are a handful, all in, mostly in the basic material section on the upside. So this is our, uh, scan here and I am going to make this layout available. I'm trying to catch up and, and publish this cause I know there's been people asking for it. Um, so I am going to try and get this as a layout, as a download on our store. So um, that's coming hopefully in the next week uh, or so I can get that up there. But basically, you know, on the upside here, you can see ag inputs, uh, basic materials closing at highs. We see aluminum closing at highs. We see coal closing at highs. We see food distribution trying to break out to new highs. We've got gold now. So starting to perk up here, basic materials. Uh, we also have, uh, again, um, industrial metals and, and minerals uh, starting to perk back up, close near highs and metal fabrication starting to, you know, heavier volume, starting to lift back up here. And then last but not least, tobacco continues to ratchet higher. So there was actually a handful of, of things, all, all very, um, you know, uh, material focused. If we go to the downside, uh, we have uh, beverage and uh, wineries and distilleries, uh, which was pretty cool, it's pretty small range, but heavier volume coming in, closing at the lows. Uh, we saw data storage really unravel today. There must have been a uh, earnings uh, story in this or some type of rebalance in this in index, but uh, this clearly seeing uh, a big move lower. We see uh, financial data and stock exchanges. We got footwear and accessories to the downside. We've got household personal products, information tech, tech services, content information, REITs, REITs, scientific, technical instruments, and some utilities lower. And then we also had just outright XLU, heavy volume closing at the lows, SMH, heavy outside reversal volumes, and consumer discretionary. So that is it. That is the full list. Lots going on this week. Markets were tricky. First, trying to head fake to the upside, sharp reversal at the end here. So certainly still in a risk management environment. That's my two cents. But what are your thoughts? Leave a comment below. Love to hear them. And as always, I'm always interested in, in sort of knowing what everybody's up to and, and looking at going into the weekend. So uh, leave a comment. 
let us all know. And with that, thank you so much. Have a great weekend. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos, if you want to stay up to date with the future updates. Have a great weekend. We'll see you back here next week.